Hello, welcome to another module in this MOOC on principles of CDMA, MIMO, OFDM wireless communication systems. So in the last module, we had seen this feeding channel coefficient h, which depends on the attenuations and the delays of the different paths. And we said that this feeding channel coefficient has an important role to play in a wireless communication system. So therefore, today we are going to model, develop models for this feeding channel coefficient. So our feeding channel coefficient h we have our feeding channel coefficient h which is given as summation i equal to 0 to l minus 1 a i e to the power of minus j 2 pi f c tau i correct. So, this is depends on the attenuations a i and the delays tau i. I am now going to expand this as summation i equal to 0 to l minus 1 a i cosine 2 pi f c tau i minus j times summation i equal to 0 to l minus 1 uh, a i sin Two pi f c tau i, right, and therefore now I can note this a i cosine two pi f c tau i by this I can denote by x and minus a i sine two pi f c tau i I can denote by y, and therefore I can write my feeding channel coefficient as x plus j y. So, I am writing my feeding channel coefficient as f h equals x plus j y, where x equals summation i equal to 0 to l minus 1 a i cosine 2 pi f c tau i and y equals i equal to 0 2 l minus 1 minus a i sin 2 pi f c tau f c tau i. And now you can clearly see both these components x and y are the sums of a large number of random components involving the a's which are the attenuations and the tau i's which are the delays. So, each so, depending on the wireless communication scenario, these attenuations a i and these uh, delays tau i are random in nature, right. And when you add a large number of these different random components, what results from the central limit theorem is Gaussian random variables. Hence, these x and y which are the sum of a large number of random components. So, since x i, so first we realize that since a i which are the attenuations and tau i which are the, the tau i which are the delays, these are random in nature. Hence, this x i and y i, these since in turn this x x comma y are the sum of a large number of these are the sum of a large number of random components. Hence, by the central limit theorem x and y can be assumed to be Gaussian distributed random variables. Hence, x comma y can be assumed to be
Gaussian. This has to be Gaussian in nature. So, we are assuming x and y to be Gaussian random variables. And just to briefly tell you about a Gaussian random variable, a Gaussian random variable has a PDF which looks as a bell shaped curve, which is a probability density function. That is a Gaussian random variable, which is centered at mu, that is the mean mu of the Gaussian random variable. So, x is a Gaussian random variable, which is denoted as n, that is with mean mu and variance sigma square, that is the spread of this Gaussian random variable, that is the width of this bell curve is related to its variance sigma square the mean is mu and the PDF of this Gaussian random variable, this is given as f of x of x equals 1 over square root of 2 pi under root 2 pi sigma square e raised to minus x minus mu whole square divided by 2 sigma square. This is the PDF of this Gaussian random variable. Further, we are going to assume that this x and y are independent Gaussian random variables with mean 0 and normalized to variance half each. So, x is a Gaussian random variable which is distributed with mean 0 and variance half. And as we had seen, therefore, if I substitute in this expression, if I substitute mu equal to 0 and sigma square equal to a half. So, we have basically what we have from this is that mu equals 0 and sigma square equals half. Therefore, we have f of x of f x is 1 over 2 pi sigma square e raised to minus x minus mu square divided by 2 sigma square and substituting mu equal to 0, sigma square equals half. I have 1 over 2 pi into half e raised to minus x square divided by 2 into half, which is equal to 1 over square root of 1 over square root of pi. So, this is equal to 1 over square root of pi e to the power of minus x square. So, the distribution of the real component x is 1 over square root of pi e to the power of minus x square. Similarly, also assuming y to be a Gaussian random variable, which is distributed with mean 0 and variance half, we have f y of y equals 1 over square root of pi e to the power of e raised to minus y square. Further, assuming that these x and y are independent random variables, what we are further going to assume that, assume that, assuming x comma y are independent Assuming x comma y are independent random variables, we have the joint distribution that is f of x comma y of x comma y. The joint distribution is given as the product of the individual or the marginal distributions that is f of x comma y of x comma y is equal to f x of x into f y of y. Therefore, the joint distribution of the random variables is equal to the product. This is equal to the product of the marginal densities. product of the marginal densities and therefore, we have 
f x y of x comma y equals 1 over square root of pi e raised to minus x square times 1 over square root of pi e raised to minus y square, which is equal to 1 over pi e raised to minus x square plus y square. So, this is the joint distribution that is 1 over pi e raised to minus x square plus y square is the joint distribution of the x and y. So, what we have done is we have characterized the distribution that probability density function of the fading channel coefficient in terms of the real and imaginary parts of the fading channel coefficient. So, we have characterized its distribution. This is one way to characterize the distribution of the fading channel coefficient. However, a more interesting and a more useful way, a helpful way to characterize the distribution of the fading channel coefficient h is to characterize it rather in terms of the real and imaginary components is to characterize it in terms of the magnitude and phase of the fading channel coefficient. That gives us an idea of the power of the received signal and the phase of the received signal. Therefore, what we are going to do is we are going to now convert h which we have represented as x plus j y as a e to the power of j phi, where a is the amplitude of the fading channel coefficient and it is equal to square root of x square plus y square and phi which is equal to the phase of this thing of uh, the fading channel coefficient is equal to tan inverse y by x. Also, we can write this the other way round as x equal to a cosine phi and y is equal to a sin phi. We can write it as x equal to a cosine phi, y is equal to a sin phi. Now, what we want to do? We have we are given the joint distribution in terms of x and y. So, we have the joint distribution in terms of the real and imaginary components x comma y. What we would like to do is we would like to derive the joint distribution in terms of the amplitude and phase factors a comma phi. We would like to derive the joint distribution in terms of the amplitude and phase factor a comma phi and this can be done as follows. So, what we have is the following thing. We have f of a comma phi this amplitude in terms of a and phi equals 1 over pi e to the power of minus x square plus y square that is the joint distribution in terms of x and y times the Jacobian of the determinant of the Jacobian of x y. We are going to derive this shortly, but now you can see that x square plus y square equals a square. From the previous page, we have this relation a square. This implies here that my x square plus y square equal to a square, which implies that therefore, I can write this joint distribution as 1 over pi that is f of a comma phi of a comma phi equals 1 over pi e to the power of minus x square plus y square, x square plus y square equals a square. So, I have e to the power of minus a square times the Jacobian of x y. Now, this Jacobian of x y can be de determined as follows that is the matrix do x by do a do y by do a do x by do phi do y by do phi which you can see from the from the previous page x equal to a cosine phi we have x equal to a cosine phi y equal to a sin phi and therefore, do x by do a equals cosine phi, do y by do a equals 
sin phi dou x by dou phi equals minus a sin phi and dou y by dou phi is equal to a cosine phi. So, this is the Jacobian matrix and the determinant of this Jacobian matrix you can clearly see that is j of x y the determinant of this equals cosine phi into a cosine phi that is a cosine square phi minus minus a sin phi into sin phi that is minus a sin square phi which is equal to a cosine square phi plus a sin square phi which is equal to a. And therefore, what we have is this f of therefore, we have the determinant of this Jacobian matrix is simply equal to a and therefore, the joint distribution with respect to the magnitude and phase components equals 1 over pi e raise to minus a square times the Jacobian with respect to x y which is equal to 1 over pi e raise to minus a square times a which is a over pi e raise to minus a square. So, this is the joint distribution of the channel coefficient in terms of the magnitude and phase component. So, this is the joint distribution in terms of the. So, what we have here is basically we have the joint distribution in terms of the magnitude and phase components which is given as a over pi times e raise to minus a square. This is the joint distribution, uh, this is the distribution of h uh, or the joint distribution of a and phi which are the amplitude and phase of the fading channel coefficient h. Because remember we have h equals a e to the power of j phi which means this is the phase and A is the this is the phase phi is the phase and A is the amplitude of this fading channel coefficient and therefore, we have the joint distribution in terms of the magnitude and phase as A over pi e raise to minus A square. All right. So, now what we would like to do at this point is let us try to derive the marginal distributions from this joint distribution with respect to this magnitude and phase. Let us derive the marginal distribution. So, let us derive the marginal that is let us derive the uh, individual distribution of the amplitude A and the phase that is phi. So, distribution of the amplitude that is f of A of A is I have to take the joint distribution f of a comma phi of a comma phi and integrate it with respect to the phase integrate it with respect to the phase that is integrate with respect to the phase between and the phase the limit of the phase is between minus the phase can lie between minus pi and pi. So, I integrate it from the limit minus pi to pi. So, this is minus pi to pi a e to the power of a by pi e to the power of minus a square d phi. As you can see this inner integral does not depend on phi. So, I have a by pi e to the power of minus a square minus pi to pi of d phi which is basically a by pi e to the power of minus a square into 2 pi equals 2a e to the power of minus a square. So, this is the distribution of the magnitude that is 2a e to the power of minus a square and this is known as a Rayleigh fading, this is known as the Rayleigh distribution. This is the this 
this is the relay distribution. Hence, this channel coefficient h is also known as a relay feeding channel. Hence, the channel coefficient h is also termed as a relay fading or relay hence this channel coefficient h is also termed as a this is also termed as a relay fading channel all right so its distribution is given as f of a of a equals to a e to the power of minus a square and if you look at that distribution it looks something like this for a greater than or equal to 0 this is the relay distribution this is f a of a this is a and if you can look at this region this region which is close to 0 which corresponds to a approximately equal to 0 that is where the channel coefficient the gain of the channel coefficient is very small it is close to 0 this is termed as a this is termed as the deep fade so this region where the feeding channel coefficient is very small that is the probability this region and the corresponding probability. So, this region corresponds to the deep fade region where the feeding channel coefficient the magnitude of the feeding channel coefficient is very small and the corresponding probability is termed as the probability of deep fade. So, the probability that A is close to 0 which means the probability density integrated over this region is basically termed as the probability of deep fade. Remember we had earlier talked about the deep fade as an event where the channel takes a dips uh, to take a very small that is where the different multipath components cancel out each almost cancel out each other resulting in a very small gain or resulting in a very high attenuation of the received signal that that corresponds to the deep fade uh, the deep fade event and what we are saying here is that basically this uh, region uh, where the channel coefficient the magnitude of the channel coefficient a is very close to 0 corresponds to the deep fade event and the corresponding probability is the probability of the deep fade. So, we will stop this module here and we will continue with the next module. Thank you very much.